Welcome, welcome to another edition of the worldwide phenomenon that is taking the world by storm. We took the word of Wobbacle and podcast and created a Wobba Pod, where I get the privilege of talking to exceptional people from our community and around the country. Today, I have someone very special. You've heard of the muscles from Brussels. Today, I have the original Aboriginal. And when you see his abs, you'll know what I mean. He has so many muscles. When he does traditional dancing and does shake a leg, the ground around him shakes a leg. When he does the kangaroo, dance in his tight little skin kangaroo lap lap and he jumps around all hearts go ooh la la he's the one and only ladies and gentlemen boys and girls Mr. Evis Heath well, how are you my brother? Yeah well, brother what an intro how can I lead up to that my brother? You like that? The muscles from <laughs> Brussels but today we have the original Aboriginal. That's it brother. Yeah. Which I've which that is what you do uh, call yourself, eh? Yeah, brother. It's funny how that name come about. I mean, we've been living by it from day one since we've been here when the uh, early settlers decided to come on board. But um, you know me, man, I break down words and um, it just happened to be that the ab in that word <laughs> ab original actually means not original. Did you know that? I think you might have told me. Explain it's that to like me again. It's just like you think about it. When you think of something abnormal... It's not normal. Uh, you think of those words. Did you bring with, that up just because you're talking to me? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been diving in deep, you know, my brother, and I love yeah. the origin of words. And, you know, a lot of our mob uh, at the moment, like Uncle Ray Kelly, even my brother, uh, Liam Price, are doing a lot of stuff on language. And I really do think it, it's it's really the foundation of what we need to get back as a, as a community, not only uh, as, you know, uh, original people of the land, but also as a, a community, as one, uh, with the non-Indigenous as well. So when I thought about <laughs> the the uh, Ab original, obviously, um, you know, it, it's been a life uh, time uh, sort of thing with me to be looking after my body, uh, mind and spirit. And um, it just so happened to be that um, I really crafted a, a nice six pack rod. So I live by that name. Yeah. I walk that name. I am that name. <laughs> I'm uh, called the uh, One Keg Original. One Keg Original. Just, uh, yeah. Keeping it. Keeping it. How is it going for you, my brother? You Not good. Yet, you Not good. You haven't I seen me you. for a while. I've uh, put on a little bit of weight. Mm. Yeah, about uh, 65 so it's kilos. It's only a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> no, I've put on a bit. Yeah. I've, uh, yeah. It, but, you know, I always feel a bit motivated after talking to you. So I'm hoping today something... You can ignite something in me and uh, we'll see how we go. Now, you and I have known each other for, well, I think, because I'm a bit older than you, uh, I've known you since you were pooping yellow. Yeah. We go way back. They, they uh, were bad foods they were going for <laughs> pooping yellow. <laughs> My first memories of you, it's funny, it's around dancing when we used to dance. You know, um, I was probably 12, so you would have been, what, I'm, how, what are you now? I'd, I'd be, I'm 40, I'm, 43. Oh yeah, you would have been. So I was. I started when I was twelve. Mm. So you would have been around like four and that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah and they, your dad used to put you in a little lap lap. <laughs> you and Ray Kelly and walk and all that, and used to paint you up. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. that's my first memories of you. Actually, is when we used to perform dancing, Good and memories. of your dad. Good memories. Brother. Your dad uh, was a big part of this community, especially on the cultural side of things, mm. the camps, mm -hmm. and um, also with the dancing and all that, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, big, big, big part of the community. And you know, I didn't mention Uncle Ray's name. You had the likes of him, uh, Dad, Uncle Jimmy Wright, Uncle Bill Smith, all of the elders that really formed the community and what we probably know as a wobby called today. You know, yeah. even Uncle Kevin Anderson in there. Was yeah, just a beautiful <laughs> mob. Uh, that we're very fortunate yeah. to be coming under in that next generation. I think we're very, as you said, fortunate that for that time and period that we had elders, uh, men and women, uh, that could take what was around them and create something and create the foundations of this empire. And I will call it an empire of what we love have today. Love that, man. Yeah, love yeah. that. Love that. Yeah. So also, um, as I said, I've known you since, uh, you know, the dancing days. Um, probably the next biggest thing I remember with you is your mother and Cheryl Smith coming around with a camera and wanting to do a, a <laughs> local community uh, help, men's magazine. I, was, I think I was Mr. November. <laughs> yes. I, I, I was actually showing someone that photo the other day and I actually had a four pack, a there little four go. pack. 
Yeah. Yes, yeah. Helen, I did, looking at me like that. <laughs> and yeah. so you were 16, I think it was under 16, or you might have been about 15. That's correct. Because I was yeah. only like about 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that was for you to, because you're a bit of a cricketer. Yeah, brother. That was actually a little bit of a fundraiser, uh, which I'm still thankful for today. Uh, a lot of the mob got together and uh, you, you've done that deadly little calendar. <laughs> we had the likes of uh, beautiful Stan Moyle in there, De deadly Stan the man. I think, uh, who else got in there? Oh, there was Andrew Smith, Edward, <laughs> Andrew Malcolm Smith, Smith of course, Ray Smith, forget. Yeah. Uh, Shiloh, yeah. all, Dougie all, Gordon. All, all the brothers. <laughs> but that was uh, one of my first ever big trips of going offshore and I, I yeah. ended up um, cutting a track over to uh, England. Mm. And I'm um, very fortunate to tour with the New South Wales uh, boys' school team. And, um, yeah, uh, it was like those particular experiences that really started building the foundation of to who you see today. Because uh, we, played, we played cricket together for a couple of seasons. We, we also made the grand final. And, um, yeah, you were the skinny little kid. <laughs> But you must have been, yeah, like 16 and you were well, you know, playing men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you're coming in bowling and batting. You, you weren't too bad. It was deadly times, man. And I always looked up to you, brothers. Yes, even you, Rod. And um, to have that beautiful, you know, camaraderie, um, like we always need, you know, those mentors like yourself and Dad and all the rest of the boys, I just felt comfortable i yeah. felt safety and secure <clears throat> so man it wouldn't have mattered what age i was i was in a good environment and i was able just to perform just by turning up soccer oh <clears throat> a lot of people like to say football but yeah, football, it is bro. called football let's call it football man how did who, where'd your football uh soccer start with who'd you start with it's funny you, brother it's funny you ask that because dad at the time i don't know if you remember but um we we'll, were we'll just about to get a, a wobbicle uh young young fellas team going and it just so happened to be that that got canned and then um the old man put me down at um what was it the christian under 16s christians uh schools soccer team i was only like 12 at the time or something and um yeah even though the the, the shirt was two sizes too big for me <laughs> uh, i still uh, like i said i just turned up and I just enjoyed it, brother. Like, yeah. you know, it was always part of the DNA. And no matter what it was going to be, whether it was a cricket bat or a football at my feet, I was always going to enjoy just being mm. a part of it. Yeah. And so with that, you were able to... Uh, what, what was your first representative? You were able to... Well, it was, it was definitely that New South Wales team um, when I toured over to England. Um, with the actual football, it, it would have been going into the old school before it was called Breakers. Yeah. Um, we, we had a couple of teams that sort of started to come through then. So we, we were in that squad over there and that led to things like, you know, uh, Hunter Hornets and stuff yeah. like that. And then, um, yeah, just progressed from there, brother. And, you know, like I said, I kept turning up. I kept putting in the, in the, uh, the training and yeah. the hours. And then it's just that beautiful ripple and flow effect, you know. Um, it led for one thing and the other. Ended up going into um, a local uh, Hamilton Olympic here in Newcastle. And they just happened to be a feeder club, uh, two breakers at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's what fed me into the breakers under John Cosmina and uh, Greg Smith out oh, okay. there. Okay. Yeah. So they were deadly days. That was really the formation of the Jets. And then how did you end up in Melbourne? Well, I went down there, um, you know, not a lot of the local followers, we weren't really getting a kick under Cos. He, he was bringing in, uh, obviously, you know, a lot of experience from other clubs uh, around Australia. And so a lot of us young followers had to cut a track. Um, I just so happened to have a, a source and a connection down in Melbourne and I ended up playing the Premier League down at um, Port Melbourne in the Sharks yeah. there. Okay. Um, which was, was a beautiful experience again. I was just on 18, touching into 18. Wow. So, you know, like it, it was definitely one of those things and you, you see it for a lot of, you know, our mob these days. I had to really cut the cords and let go of this environment, local city, yeah. um, family, friends and everyone to sacrifice and really go down there and chase the dream. Yeah. Mm. So how long was you down there for? Um, ended up being a good three to five years. So yeah. what brought you back? Yeah, it's, it's the salt water, brother. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I got injured down there yeah. and I, I was just at the university and I was um, actually doing graphic design, what they call it back then. 
And I thought I'd better finish off that course, um, which turned into visual communication. Yes, uh, that's as right. A lot of you guys would know. <clears throat> um, so, you know, I came back to finish off that um, and really sort of have that to fall back on. Um, just in case those injuries came up in the future. <laughs> it's funny how you forget things, but the the one and only, uh, for those who do know, I did a country CD many years ago. Oh, yeah. And who did my CD album there cover? There brothers. I remember doing it too well. O always lucky to... Uh, I don't know how we got talking. You said, oh, yeah, I'm into that graphic designs. And I said, oh, well, can you do my CD cover and all that? So, yeah. and the album. Yeah, so... That was another time you got your shirt off for the cover, wasn't it? Yeah, but I was, I had a body then. <laughs> <laughs> and a guitar to put in front of it. It was a big guitar too. Well, it was just lucky you had that cowboy Tall string. hat. Yeah. Tall string, electric. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, through your your journey, um, as we were talking a bit earlier, sports and fitness go hand in hand, especially to be at that professional level. And as you said, unfortunately, uh, you're telling me you, you got an injury, but the sport or even just the fitness side hasn't left you and over the oh geez even the last 20 years that i've known uh just in the last 20 years um you've gotten more into the oh geez what would you call it i was just going to say phys you've gotten more into the training side of it but i mean that's the common word but as we know there's a lot more to just training um you've had your own gyms your personal trainer um, so today, yeah, I, I was hoping to tap into some of your expertise and that wisdom and knowledge uh, that you have. And uh, yeah, so I want to I tap around the health, body, spirit and mind. Wow, man. How long have we got? Oh, we've got about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> All right, so let me hear you. So, um, you know, so health is at the center of our life. And this is something I Googled and I thought, oh, that's, that sounds good. And, you know, every part of our life relies on us having good health. But the word health, I believe, and f but for me, I believe the, the word health is broken into many parts um, for that to be true. I know we could talk forever, but let's just start off with an easy one. And, and that is the body. Does one need to have big, beautiful, sparkly, shiny, ripped carb God like muscles like me to be classified as fit? <laughs> Look, brother, I mean, we, we can dive in deep and I, I just want to, again, draw that foundation from that word you mentioned, health. You know, mm. like when I look at that word and I just hear it from you then, I always look at the first part of that world and it says hill. Um, you look at the last part and, you know, a lot of people talking about the healthy self lately. You think of that and it's like that hill thyself. So what have we got to do to heal thyself? <laughs> and for me, my brother... You know, we can keep it as simple as move the body. Yeah. The body has its real, its own mind, its own consciousness. And, um, you know, when I started to dive in deep, particularly when I got into helping people on their health and fitness journeys, um, I really started to see there was a deeper connection as opposed to just the muscles, mm. you know, the physical body, the joints. And um, I started to really see that it was all intertwined into that mind, that spirit like you talk about as well. And, um, you know, it's even got me uh, connecting differently with how I train. You know, I still love lifting a bit of iron, but I mix a lot of wood with that. And what I mean is that the stuff that I do now, I encourage people to really get back out in country. You know, mm. we, we're talking about NADOC coming in next week and it's talking about um, healing country, <laughs> funnily enough. Um, it's really getting back out in nature and really connecting with her. Because, mm. you know, I love, you know, like I said, lift the nine and getting into these gyms still, but it really has disconnected people from their body. And that's what I see with a lot of the work I do and how I help people is really returning back home. It's coming back home to self. So what do you mean about, about, about that, like um, disconnecting from the body? Well, like I said, brother, uh, we, we grow up, um, you know, but before we turn the age of seven, uh, very cautious sort of first seven years, we create our identity based on those people that looked after us, um, you know, might have been our teachers, might have been the pastor, it could have been, you know, uncles, cousins, whoever was looking after us. And so we lent out a lot of our energy and we give a lot of away a personal power so the work I do now, particularly a lot of brothers around our age and sisters, um, is about returning back home, bringing in those fragmented pieces that you may have given away. 
So it's really going back to our old ways of that, you know, give and re-give, that beautiful symbiotic relationship with your own body, mind and spirit. Mm. So is that, um, so when you're like saying um, giving back or giving, is that a part of the healing process of health with the body? Is that what you mean? Yeah, I, I mean, it's definitely part of it. Um, the thing is the body is a beautiful messenger. It's, it's a beautiful uh, signal. It, 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 it's uh, a messenger in the way that it can tell you whether you are healthy or healthy, as I say. Mm. Um, you know, you just got to look at our mob. You got to look at the wider community. Um, and without being judgmental, showing nothing but love and compassion, you can tell if someone's sick. Mm. And what you're seeing on the planet now is really um, a deeper side, which is more of an emotional purge. Yeah, yeah. So the body is very clever. It stores emotions. Mm. So when we can start to come back, like I said, and return back home to self, then we can start really releasing some of these blocked emotions that have been laying in here, not only in this lifetime, but you think our mob, we've got generations of trauma, man. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you yeah. know, so we carry on this DNA over and over. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's been a big part of my journey now that I've been really rewriting in my generation um, some of those, you know, sort of things that why we may be sick. So that's where a lot of the work that I do now is really getting into that deeper side of who we are. I'm, I like that rewriting. Re yeah. Is that like rewri rewriting the past? That's it, brother. Because it, it is true. Like the, the generational things that have just carried over and over in that vicious cycle until somebody or, or parents or, as you said, or, or group, even organisation, cuts those ties and you say no more, it just doesn't stop, does it? And, and that all comes back to as a part of healing the body. 100%, brother. And it's just being aware of that. You know, like a lot of us are walking around unconscious. So that returning mm. back home is becoming conscious, being able to be self-aware of what that mind, body, spirit is to you. And really, as I've talked about this year, and using a, using a beautiful word for a lot of the stuff you are doing now, but I'm always talking about people coming back home and becoming the one in 21. Yeah. Well, okay. You like that? <laughs> <laughs> With you saying people walking around conscious, unconscious, you know, that reminds me of uh, The Matrix. Take the red pill or the green pill. <laughs> Brother, you're blowing me away already. Spirituality. Now, a lot of times when I hear in a convo over you, this is, this is a big thing. So another thing I, I, I like that I discovered, um, spirituality involves the recognition of a feeling or a sense or belief that there is something greater than oneself or something more to being human. As Aboriginal people, our ancestors or our old people, as we like to say, were very spiritual people. What's your thoughts on spirituality and does Evers Heath believe in spirituality? Oh, good. We, we could definitely go longer than half an hour here, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it, it, it's, it's one of those things I think to keep it very, very, very simple is that innately our nature, if you thought we didn't have the body, then we'd naturally be spiritual, mm -hmm. all right? So we're down here, we're spiritual beings having that human experience in the body. I'm trying to, you know, get people to think about what are we driving around? It's just a meat suit, mm. but mm. it's it's your ship. So you've got to think about the relationship you're having with your body as a spiritual being. Spirituality in our culture, obviously a lot of that stuff that I draw upon now is from country, it's from land. And it's to really understand, understand and understand that we are working with something more divine than just that physical self. Mm. But when we give too much of that power away, then, you know, we fall into the trap of really not running our own show. Yeah. So, yes, I do believe there is something greater. I'm not going to say it's religious. Um, I'm definitely a spiritual man. Um, but I, I really like people, like I said, owning their own show. Yeah. So when you start to really realize, as I always say, that you are co-creating with the divine or whatever that presence yeah. is that's co-creating, then that's when it really starts to be game on. How does that help one? It helps one because you create your own reality yeah. as opposed to being a plan of someone else's. Uh, and that's what I'm yeah. saying. Coming back home to self, when you start to take ownership 
of this ship. Yeah. Build the relationship. Everything's yeah. a ship. Yeah. Then you can start creating the reality you want to see. Until then, you become the plan of someone else's. And that's what Jim Rowan says and, and you know, a lot of these greats. Yeah. I noticed you do a lot of podcasts or you're invited to a lot of pod podcasts um, I see on your social media. Do you mm. talk about a lot of things like that? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually part of um, a podcast called Real Men Will Talk Live um, with four other gentlemen, uh, three other gentlemen on the fourth, uh, overseas on the other yeah. side of the pond. And we talk a lot about this stuff. Uh, we dive in deep about relationships. Uh, we dive in deeper about a lot of the stuff that's going on, particularly after 2020, uh, when all of us got an opportunity to reset, pause and really mm. uh, <clears throat> recharge what we've known to, to be ourselves at this point. Um, and, you know, anything else to really help people uh, up level and show up in their lives. So we're providing tools as we speak about our own personal experiences. And I really don't think there's any better teacher than your own life. Mm. So that's a lot of the stuff that we're talking about at Real Men Real Talk Live, yeah. As you said, I know we could get deeper and deeper <laughs> into spirit. Because, I mean, you know, the first bit, just with the health and, and spiritual, a lot of people, yeah, just that common thinking is just, or basic thinking, thinking you've got to go to a gym or you've got to go for a run, you've got to eat healthy. This, I'll, you know, this is what I've got to do to be fit and healthy, you know, but it's so much more, isn't it? Yeah, brother. It is. You know, you've got to think of the biochemistry. I mean, physical, you know, like you've got to think of the layers. And that's why, you know, like I've, I've been doing a couple of guided meditations lately um, where I take people on that deep journey. And, you know, it was beautiful because I was mentioning earlier when we were over to Yarn, um, I was fortunate enough to do a, a workshop with Denowin uh, Mentoring with mm. Erin on the Central Coast with John O. Wright, Selena Wright, Nani Tam. And mum and then, um, you know, a, a lot of the stuff we were, you know, talking about was giving ourselves that time to pause and be still. Um, we had a, we've got a beautiful um, sister up on the top uh, land up in Darwin Way, we're a Radjuri mob. And in their language, they actually call it the deity. Oh, yeah. And the deity, uh, which was a term um, that um, uh, Miriam uh, Rose Borman, uh, brought to the surface, which means inner deep listening and still awareness while waiting. And so that the deity to me is really starting to listen to your body. Mm. You know, it's, it's reconnecting to your body. And when you give yourself that time, then you can start listening on the deeper levels about, you know, why we may be sick. Yeah. Why we may be making these choices <clears throat> that don't serve our body, serve our experience. Just your well-being overall. Well-being, brother. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to keep moving. Keep moving, brother. <laughs> Healthy body, spirit and mind. You know, I was thinking really hard about what comes first. If somebody said to me, Rod, which one should I focus on first? And I know you got to focus on all, but, you know, like the chicken and the egg, it, it, <laughs> you know, is it a healthy body do I start with first or a healthy spirit? or a healthy mind. And for me, I, I was thinking, I suppose maybe, as you said, like when one listens to, to oneself and, and digs deep inside, I suppose my main thing I need to get fixed first would be my healthy, would be to try and get a healthy mind so I could do the others. If you had to choose one to, to start off with, what would, it, what would it be in order, like a, for a body, spirit or mind? For your journey, God, brother. What if you? What if I said none of the th none of the above? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go and hit me. What if I said a healthy heart? Yeah, look at this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we look around some of these things, and it really does come back to one of those first things that's really built within the body when we're born is the heart. And yeah. what you've started to see is that many people simply got broken hearts. Yeah. And, you know, Rumi, one of the greats, um, mentioned, you know, a heart has to be broken until it can open. So once we come back and heal this heart through, you know, whether it's been relationships, whether it's been breakdowns in your career, could be your health, could be even how you're spending your time. Mm. And they're the four big ones that I really help people with. Then you can really intertwine the rest of them. Mm. You know, they, they say, you know, if the, the universe is mental, then the mind is all. 
Mine's definitely a big part of it because we've got to think about some of that self-sabotaging talk, the, the stories we tell ourselves each day, the stories that are being programmed and conditioned down to us. Um, and then like I, I've mentioned with the body and then the spirit, like I said, we, we're down here having the human experience. We are spiritual. Yeah. But it, it's really coming back to self and healing that heart. That's a good point. I ne you know, I never even thought about like when I was trying to put some questions together about the heart. Mm. Um, because, you know, when you're, when you're happy, it's, you rejoice. And, uh, but as you said, if you've had a, a lot of trauma, or, or, or bad things happen, you know, a lot of it, you know, they say heartbroken. Mm. My heart feels like it's dead. Yeah. And I never really thought about that. So um, mm. it, it probably does, yeah. I suppose that kind of goes in, and I, and I do see how it all goes hand in hand. You know, as you said, like looking at one's spirit and fixing things there, looking at your heart within what's there, if that's broken and, you know, um, yeah, it, it is. It all it is all just linked, isn't it? Oh, hundred percent, brother. It's, it's all beautifully intertwined and woven, and um, that's what I'm saying. You know, like it's not just one thing. And people are going to be in different, you know, uh, levels within their own journey. Um, it may be like I said, that broken heart, but then it it could be, you know, like a lot of the stuff we're suffering from now, a lot of depression, a lot of stress, mm. a lot of anxiety. So a lot of this stuff comes back to that mental health, that mental side, you know, yeah. um, really being able to balance out the whole four to me is really the key. So you think fixing the heart will help fix the, the mind? Brother, the heart's a, a very electromagnetic. We don't have to get too sciencey, but it, it's sending out this beautiful field. And so yeah. like when we heal this heart, which is really, you know, um, uh, birthed first when we come out of the womb, then we, we, we've got to start to think that once we've brought all those fragmented pieces from those broken bits and pieces, and as I always say, you can start really painting the masterpiece of the heart. You look at that last ART. It is really a masterpiece of art. Where do you find these things? <laughs> <laughs> Too much time, my hand, brother. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah. That's really good. Mm. Um, what about the mind? As you said, depression uh, is huge among people. Uh, but within our mob, it is probably, well, it is, I think, now the fastest growing <sighs> issue that, that we have. Um, in your experiences and, and through your lifetime and, and also, as you said, um, partnering with people from overseas, what advice or all that could you get to, to us, you know, if, if you can just give something short that is about that healing or what people might be able to do to get that one, as you say? Yeah, big thing for me, brother, is disconnect to reconnect. And what I mean by that is that there's so much going on in our world at the moment Society just gets us at this fast pace. And when we go into the nervous system side, we think about these connections that go up. You know, the mind is just an instrument of the brain. Um, we think of that brain and apparently we're only using 10% of it, mm. but wouldn't it be nice to use <coughs> the full 100%? So for me, it I'd is be happy really... i 12. <laughs> <laughs> 12 would be enough. <laughs> So if we're doing that 10%, you know, like one of the first steps for me is really giving your time in that deity, that stillness, that patience, that calmness to just sit with yourself. So when you get comfortable with that, you start to, you know, give yourself that time to be able to bring that balance back to some of those, like I said, fragmented pieces that we may have been giving out to people, places and things externally to ourselves. So practicing stillness, where are we going to do that? Brothers and sisters, hill country, NAIDOC week coming yeah. up. It's country. Step yeah. out in nature. Yeah. Ground yourself. Take your shoes off. We're locked in these four walls. I don't know if a lot of people have started to see it, but what we've walked into is a, it's, it's a real point within human evolution whether we're going to be really subservient to what we're living in and lock down in these four walls, or we're we gonna stay connected with country, mother, earth, Gaia, whatever other words you call her, to really live out the best life possible. Mm. 
And for me, that's one of the first steps. Just take a step outside. It's simple, but it's not easy. Mm. But it's effective. Effective, brother. Effective. I know as a kid, um, I used to hate it during school. So in summer, mum and dad would always take us camping for about 10 days. We'd go back out to New England where we are from and that. And I used to whinge and complain to go, especially when I was like, got my older teens. I was like, oh, what do I got to go for? Um, but geez, by the end, mum, I said, I said, mum, what am I going to go for? And she goes, to get you away from all of this. Mm. And I said, get away from what? Mm. She goes, the, uh, I, you know, technology wasn't nothing like we have now, but you know, TV and, and just sitting around the house and, mm. you know, um, and just, I suppose living in an urban area too, getting away and getting back out bush. Because out there you're going to hear birds and you hear, because we always camp near a freshwater river, mm. here in the river, drinking from the river, fishing from the river, uh, you know. So I do get that. Yeah. Uh, and it was funny coming back after 10 days, it's like everything, it's like that reset you're talking about. 100% brother. Yeah. yeah and it's beautiful you talk about that, that, that younger child. You know, um, a lot of the healing that I do for a lot of people at the moment is really going back to that inner child. And a lot of our memories, you know, going back to that mind, those stored memories in the past, they they were times that we were outside in nature. Mm. You know, whether it was down the park having a kick with the boys or, you know, if you were just uh, going for a walk down bush, it was those times that we were connected with her mother nature that were the, the really f most fulfilling times, I think, of our lives. Yeah. And you see it with all of our mob, you know, you've had some beautiful people come in here and speak on the uh, podcast. Um, you know, they all talk about being disconnected from her. Yeah. It really is the first step. Now, here's a topic I know that's going to get a few of your inner beings. <laughs> Food medicine versus chemical medicine. You have a wealth of knowledge about nutrition. And everything that you've got accumulated over the years. So Christians like to say there is healing power in the word. Evers Heath, is there healing power in food? Man, like they say, hey, um, food really does change your mood. Um, you know, I, th I think about what's currently on the planet at the moment. I always say, you know, we've got junk food. Well, one's only junk and there's just only food. So to me, you know, we've got to start taking ownership. We've got to start taking responsibility of what we're taking in, what we're consuming, not only on that technology like you mentioned, um, but also with food. Food is information. So you think about some of these foods, you know, it's either high vibrational food or it's just low vibrational. And I think innately at our very core, we know, we know what's food and what's not. So at the moment, mm. you start to see, I mean, I, I just take a walk down to Coles and Woolies and I look at some of those foods there and they don't, they don't look real to me. Mm. They look like food because, you know, visually they look like food, whatever we've grown up. But then I'll go for a, a walk down on the markets every Sunday morning and I'll look at these foods that are still grown from the earth. Mm. They're different, brother. So innately, I think all of us know, we have enough common sense to say, okay, what is the difference between food and junk? Is it serving me? Is it going to get me to where I want to go? And how does it make me feel today? Mm. The healing power? The healing power. Like I said, you either got high vibrating food or you don't. Like I mentioned, I've been fasting. I go into a 24-hour fast tomorrow. Um, hashtag last of fast Friday. That gives my body a time to reset, yeah. you know, and, and really digest. Otherwise, when we're stuffing in a lot of this food, a lot of it that I'm starting to see is just habitual. It's habit. And for a lot of the people that I help, it really does come back to that emotional eating. Yeah. You know, um, yes. like yes. we go back to the trauma, we go yeah. back to the stories we tell ourselves, There's the comparison to people, places and things outside of ourselves. So it really is coming back home and being able to make those better choices for food that serves you. Yeah. Mm. No, <clears throat> the emotional eating, yeah, I, I know that too well. And, um, yeah, it's it's like a, it becomes your safety blanket. And um, it's hard to get out of. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here's a question which got me thinking. With everything you know and, and with all the foods, if Evers Heath could only live on four things, food-wise, or one of them, obviously water maybe, um, what would they be? Uh, are you saying like a, a food for energy? Are you saying a food for comfort? What sort of food? To live. To live? What if I said the sun, water, <laughs> breath? <laughs> you hurt me, dude. But <laughs> no, uh, look, I, uh, I know, no yeah. like mentioning the sun, you've told me, uh, that was something many years ago you told me about the healing power of the sun. And it's true. Brother, you just got to look at all of the flags on this planet. So I've got the sun up there. It's got some sort of stars or whatever. But the sun is the true giver of life. That's yeah. why we have him on our flag. Um, we, I do a lot of sun gazing where I look into that sun. The sun's known to obviously promote your vitamin D. Uh, certain levels on that horizon um, helps with the, uh, you know, the uh, vitamin B levels as well. So, you know, the sun for me, our mob again, and a lot of the broader community, we're not getting out in the sun enough either. Um, so it is definitely a vital source of energy that we've got mm. to have. But, you know, to, to really be serious and go back to some of those foods, you cannot go wrong eating from the earth, ground up. Yeah, yeah. Um, a, a, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Sabi said um, uh, he only passed away. He's from Honduras. He actually mentioned that, um, you know, that the, with the food, if it doesn't heal you, um, it either can heal you or kill you. And it literally does mean that. You think if some of these foods from the ground or from the earth, how could that be bad for you? Mm. So when we look at all those sources of greens, um, you really can't go wrong. So a lot of my programming that I help people with now definitely does come back to those high vibrata uh, vibratory foods like your greens that are grown from that sun at Panau. Might steal that. Foods that heal you or kill you. Kill yeah, man. You. Yeah. I was going to say kill. Can kill I either heal or kill? <laughs> Brother, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up. Yeah. Um, as, I, you know, as you said, we, we could go on forever. Um, firstly, thank you for coming on. But as you know, um, a Wobbicle health organisation, um, if ever Heath could just give our, our listeners out there, and especially for our mob who who, you know, I suppose like myself, who struggle, you know, with food, uh, the mind, all, all of it, pretty much all of it. Um, you know, what advice would you give? What would you like to say to finish off? Keep it very simple, my brother. And, you know, we sort of touched on it. And I think if you could do something for this next month, love on yourself. Mm. Come back home yourself. Give yourself some love, that self-care, Put up some healthy boundaries for yourself and really show gratitude from not only where you are today, but particularly for our, you know, mob um, that have been really living in survival from where we've come from. So really showing that gratitude for, you know, who, who, where we've come from to who you are today and who you want to become. You know, th three things for me um, is really tapping into that self-trust self-acceptance from, from those places, that self-gratitude and that self-appreciation. And when you can start at those sort of points, you give yourself that opportunity to start really intertwining some of those things that we've talked about today, like mind, body and spirit. I'm getting back out to Mother Earth. That's him, brother. That's him. I might have to take my shoes off now. Connect. Nature don't make it, don't take it. Mm. Sock out and might do a few noses here, but <laughs> <laughs> my brother, um, geesh, you blow me away as always. Thank you for your wisdom. Um, thank you. Look, I'm going to say thank you too on behalf of a lot of people out there because, uh, as you know, there are not many of us out there who have. There's a lot of us that know how to go into a gym and do bench presses and arm curls and leg squats. But as you said, there's so much more. It doesn't matter how, mm. yeah, if, if your heart's broken, if the mm. spirit's broken, if the mind is broken, um, you're not going to want to do any of that. Mm. So thank you for being someone that has 
going above and beyond the boundaries of just of a gym and uh, and connecting us uh, with your knowledge. All right, too deadly, brother. My absolute pleasure. And um, as always from me, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. No problem. And sorry for sparing you in the leg when you were four-year-old. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about that after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs>